What's up, guys? Welcome to Wide World Friends English. Today, we're having a natural English conversation about doing housework. This is an intermediate listening practice, so if you can keep up with this, then you're probably a solid high intermediate. If you can't keep up, that's okay. Turn on the subtitles. Josh actually does the transcripts for you guys and puts them in the subtitles so that you guys can keep up a little bit easier. Yeah, and this video is a follow-up video from our previous one talking about these phrasal verbs of household chores, and so we're going to try to incorporate them as much as possible. But the goal is not to use every single one. We have scripted the questions, but not the answers. Yes, so you're going to get to see our looks as we try to answer these questions just on the fly. Let's get to it. In American culture, who would you say does the most housework? Nowadays? Nowadays. This is a hard question because in America, most couples both work mm -hmm. and then both take care of the house chores. Uh, to some degree, whoever works the most hours or has the most difficult day job usually does fewer household chores. Um, and we get our kids involved immediately. Like our kids are three in a year and a half and they are doing chores already. Yep. So um, in our case, we we both work. So we both do the chores. But some days maybe Josh will do more than me because maybe I have a heavier day at work uh, and vice versa. It happens yeah. also both ways. So it's really, we're very practical about this. Yeah. W would you say about cooking? Because I grew up, my dad actually cooked more often than my mom because right. my mom was a cook. And so she didn't want to come home and cook. Right, so she right. actually, yeah. I, I grew up seeing my dad cook more often than my mom. Right. But see, I grew up seeing my mom cook more because my mom was actually a stay-at-home mom. Now she also ran a business and a farm. So, I mean, she was busy too. She didn't have much time either, but she was there. Yeah. But me and my brothers, we learned to cook from a really young age too. So that was one way that we were able to help. We couldn't run the business, but we could help cook and do household chores. Very responsible. Yeah, we had to be. <laughs> so you're going to see it really depends again on situation and who actually likes it. In American culture, we're pretty free to just say, if you really like cooking, you can do more of the cooking because usually one of you are not going to like cooking. But if you both enjoy cooking, then it's an easy hobby to do together. When our life is simpler and slower paced, we do a lot of cooking together. Yeah. But otherwise, it's just whoever's free. <laughs> yeah. It's whoever can have time to put something in the oven. Yeah. Along with that idea of does a guy cook more, does a woman cook more, what are some chores that are stereotypical for a man to do or a woman to do? In American culture, uh, stereotypically, a man would definitely do the yard work. Mm. Uh, I would say that's more of a, for some reason, just going to work and doing 40 to 60 hour work week. It just seems like more of a manly thing to go outside and do the yard work too. But yeah. I know plenty of women that do the yard work themselves because they enjoy the gardening aspect or yeah. they are very particular about how things are arranged in the yard. Yeah. So I'd say if a yard has a lot of flowers, that's probably <laughs> stereotypically the woman is what we would think. Right. That's our first thought. It doesn't mean it's true. It's just our first thought. And then mowing. This year, I've seen a lot of women mowing the yards themselves. Really? <laughs> yeah. I think that's just really interesting. But that's cool. between us, you're typically the one that does that because you like to be like outside doing like stuff like that more more so than me. What, what about so, inside chores? One of um, the things I have seen, which I don't know why, but it seems like more and more guys are doing laundry more so than women. Yeah, I would say that too. I think maybe something that they can do while just... It's a more chill job than most of the other housework. Like, yeah. it's not like it's easier. It's just more chill. Yeah. Like, you can sit down in front of the TV and do that one. Yeah, maybe that's fine. But for the women, I think it's more like either they're more particular about mm. how things are cleaned and arranged and wiped down. Or they're doing more of the chores that the guy just doesn't care about. Stereotypically, again... Yeah. There are plenty of examples on the other side of all of these. Yes. But yeah, I would say I would say as far as cooking meat goes, mm. stereotypically that's more of the man's job, yeah. whether it's grilling outside or cooking inside. So, these are just some weird stereotypes for us. I would say like yeah, anything outside stereotypically is the man, anything inside is stereotypically the woman, but honestly those lines are so blurred now. It just really depends on what's practical for the couple and the family. <laughs> Yeah, one of the things I thought of is that women tend to be more detail-oriented, yeah, stereotypically. Yeah. So they tend to focus on some Windows. more detail things like <laughs> uh, dusting off the you know bookshelf or the mantle, the the mantle and mm -hmm. tidying up and freshening up. While guys are like, hmm, 
Is it a, can I see trash laying around? Okay, yeah. no, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also this idea of the car or the truck. Yeah. Sometimes some men, it's kind of a joke again, a stereotypical joke, but for the men to be like super into like taking care of their car. So mm. they're the ones that are over there like polishing, waxing the car, and making sure the interior out. is super clean. Again, neither of these stereotypes are really us. We just kind of go with what we have time for. So right. I will mow the yard if Josh doesn't have time. Yeah. But likewise, he will do the cooking or anything else if I don't have time. Yeah. You guys <laughs> may disagree, we may agree, I don't know. But when you have kids, a lot of stuff has to happen. Mm -hmm. And there's not really a whole lot of time to be like, mm, nope, that's not my job. I'm not yeah. going to do that. And it's it's like, like, I'm not about that. We don't do that, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for us, it's like, uh, that kid's poopy. Somebody's got to change that kid. And yeah, or we're going to keep smelling it and the <laughs> kid's going to cry. So, <laughs> so it's got to be done. So what chore do you enjoy doing the most? Probably the laundry, which we just kind of talked about that a little bit, but I enjoy hanging up the laundry mm. and folding up the laundry and putting the laundry away. Yeah. I mean, it smells good too. For me, I don't know what it is about it. Mainly it's, I think that's like the top of my things that I don't like. <laughs> I don't like to do the dishes. Oh, yeah. And so if I'm going to share the chores and split the chores with you, if I don't do the dishes, if we cook halfway... One of the bigger ones is to do laundry. Yeah, so. laundry is just never ending. <laughs> yeah, I think also with laundry, like you were saying earlier, is I can fold things while listening to music or right. whatever. Or like watching the kids do a puzzle or something. Like, yeah. yeah, laundry is something that you can kind of do. But if you're washing the dishes, it's not like you can walk around with the plate trying to get the, the <laughs> thing off. Like you're going to make a mess. So. Or cooking. can't just leave you things can't just unattended. Leave. Yeah, it's just more flexible. It's one that you can pick up or put down as needed. What about your least favorite? Mm, I don't like dishes, but my least favorite is dusting off. Like yeah. dusting the house. It just like, seems pointless. Yeah. It's like there's a very, very thin layer of dust and I'm going to work pretty hard to dust off all the surfaces. <laughs> and it's like, and tomorrow or the next day, there will also, again, be a thin layer of okay. dust. Oh. How dusty does it have to get before you decide it needs to be dusted? If you can take a finger and if you can like, like mark a line, if you can write your name in it, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> that explains so much. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What's your uh, favorite chore? My favorite chore is, I don't know, this one's hard. It's difficult for me to have a favorite chore because I'm okay with dusting. I, I like putting things away because I see the result pretty mm. quick. That's really nice to just be able to put things away. But it gets really annoying when you're putting the same things away like three or four times a day because of your mm. children. Um, so I guess since children, that's not my favorite anymore. <laughs> I can I, see that being a really good thing though. It was, it was yeah. very satisfying as like before kids. Now that we have kids, it's just kind of getting repetitive. Yeah. Um, maybe the dishes because it's warm in the winter. Definitely the dishes mm. because the water is so warm and it's just really comfortable. When I hand wash the dishes, the dishwasher, I don't care, but, uh, doing the dishes in warm water. Yeah. But mm. then cooking probably during the summer because I can be a little bit more creative with it or mm. the kids enjoy it more because they run outside a lot and they're hungrier and they just really want the food more <laughs> most of the time. So I get more satisfaction from watching my kids really enjoy a meal that I've cooked. I think that's part of it too. Least favorite? Least favorite is probably the laundry. Mm. It smells so good and I like hanging it out on the line, but I don't like bringing it back and folding it and putting it away. I yeah, that's always been really why. funny. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Which is funny because putting away stuff around the house is satisfying, but putting yeah. away clothes. Yeah, is I not... don't. I don't understand. That's kind of weird. <laughs> how would you say that chores change over the course of the seasons? Like, how are winter chores different than summer chores? You're dealing with colder things in the winter, so the dishes become a lot more satisfying. Like I was just saying, because it's warm, but. I mean, the chores are a little bit different because in the winter, I feel like we do a lot more like one pot meals mm. or one one dish. So like maybe we'll make chili in a big crock pot yeah. or a big pot on the stove or soup or something. So the dishes are actually a little bit easier in the winter where in the summer we're snacking so much and we're grazing because we're outside and burning a lot of energy, really. And so it makes us make more dishes. Yeah. Uh, and when you grill, anytime you grill, you've got to like scrape everything up yeah. and there's a lot of cleaning outside too. So I would definitely say that's one way that things change. What do you think? I would say one of the main things that come to my mind when I think of the change of seasons and chores is spring cleaning. 
that when as it's starting to warm up right after winter where mm. you're kind of stuck inside every day anyway they, we do this thing called spring cleaning where we just it's not a set time it's time just a that, beautiful day that's dry uh, yeah and so you and just cool. go through the house and you just clean up everything yeah. open all the windows and the doors and just there's Freshen no bugs yet up, which is and wonderful just you basically turn the whole house upside down organizing things putting things away throwing things out tossing things out yeah and doing the whole thing which chores do we teach our kids first and at what age the chores that are the least responsible <laughs> <laughs> the chores that they can not mess up or as break much, something or break something or hurt themselves yeah quite a few but we're, our daughter is a year and a half, and we've been working with her probably since 15 months. Yeah. Before she could talk, for sure. Just when she's able to walk, we're teaching her how to put blocks away, the things, and we're teaching them to put away the things that they pull out. And so yeah. one of our big rules in our house is when you pull something out, you put it away before you get another thing. Yeah. And you've got to start with that from a very young age or they won't stick to it. But yeah. right now we have a three and a half year old that's pretty good. Sometimes he needs reminding, but yeah. it doesn't take a lot to remind him. Another chore that we do is actually have our kids, which sounds crazy to some people probably, but we have them wipe up their messes. Yes. So if they spill some water, if they spill some milk, yes, I can do it much faster than they can. But it's the idea of you made the mess, you clean it up. Yeah. You wipe off the, the crumbs on the table. You wipe off the cookie stuff that's left on the table. Or you wipe up the liquids and stuff that you spilled on the floor or on the table. We try to get them to sweep or mop, but we have to do it again after they go to bed. But we're yeah. trying to teach them how to do that because, I mean, you're not going to get too much ruined doing that. And our son, since he's three and a half-ish, we've been able to get him to clear off the table. Yeah, he's been working more with doing his dishes and moving them to the counter for us. Sometimes we'll have him uh, help with cooking a little bit, like shredding cheese or cracking eggs or something like that. But those are definitely messier. Yeah. This. Last question. If you had the ability to make one chore disappear forever, what would it be? Part of me wants to say sweeping up the floors, like messes mm. on the floor or vacuuming up messes on the rugs specifically. Oh, yeah. Because I'm assuming if the chore goes away, the mess just doesn't happen. Yeah, like I'm imagining like you wipe off the table and like the crumbs that fall on the ground just go and just like... Just vanish. <laughs> that yeah. would be awesome. That would be awesome if we just didn't have to do floors, just anything floors. But if I had to just not make a cop-out answer and just specifically choose one thing, I would say maybe the rugs. Because if you think about it, if the rugs don't get dirty, then mm. you don't have to vacuum up messes from them. You don't have to shake them out. You don't have to beat them out. Yeah. It's just a pristine rug all yeah. the time. And it's really the first thing that wears out in terms of flooring. So, yeah, yeah I'd probably choose the rugs. Yeah. What about you? What a fantasy. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> For me, it'd be dishes. Like, uh, there's an element where this already happens a little bit in an American culture where we try to use disposable, like, plates and disposable yes. knives and stuff like that. And that happens... I don't really like it, but that's just a fact of life that some people, they, they're like, oh, we don't want to do dishes today, tonight, so let's just use disposable plates. And what's really nice is that you don't have to do dishes. You just throw them all yeah. away, which is really wasteful. But if we could do that, <laughs> or if the dishes that we cleaned were, were clean at the end of it, I would that would be pretty nice. One of the tricks I thought of when saying that was in China, they would take some plates and they would cover the plate in plastic. Do you remember oh, that? Yeah, for sometimes. like uh, for like takeout and stuff like that. Sometimes yeah. they cover the thing in plastic so that when it's time to get the thing, they would just take the plate out of the plastic and you have a clean plate, which I thought was a very creative way to not do the dishes. Yeah. Also a little gross. Yeah, very gross. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's it. That is our natural conversation. We did a lot in this one of just speaking quickly and having lots of little choppy phrases, including English phrasal verbs. I hope that you heard that. And if you are struggling to get through it, you can actually slow down the video on YouTube. You can go back and rewatch it. You can go through the chapters that we've set uh, for each question. So go through again, make some notes as you go. And if you can, at this point, try to make a mind map of the conversation just yeah. to kind of process what you heard. And if you are interested in more phrasal verb videos, we'll link those in the end card so that you guys yeah. can keep studying and keep growing and have better English. All right. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.